Today, we're going to talk through scumbag scalpers once again, but rather than purely focus in on their bad deeds, I want to talk to some things that fanatics will implement and some things they've already said they will implement that'll mitigate against these issues moving forward. I think it's one of the few things that we have to look forward to when it comes to fanatics taking over in a few years' time, but I think it's worth talking to today as well. Now, this came across my you know desk, I want to say 10 days ago, when DGen Rips, who is a friend of the channel, we've given him a few shout outs over the years around a known scalper you know, at Walmart, once again, sort of taking product from the shelves and ruining it for people. Now, for those of you playing at home, you will remember that we spoke about this individual in this video 12 months ago, where essentially he was doing exactly what I just said, taking basically everything off the shelves to then flip online. Now, whether you agree with sort of scalping or not, because it is fair game at the end of the day, it's something that's not overly ethical because you're taking these boxes of hangers and blasters and all that sort of stuff, putting them online, selling them for two to three times the price, if not more, and then essentially ruining it for the actual collector. Now, it's a lot easier these days to get the product, obviously, but this kind of behavior is not something that, you know, I like to see and many hobby, you know, collectors and participants like to see either. To sort of give you a bit more context, the heavy set dude in that video is the same one that we're about to talk to now, except things have changed a little bit. He's no longer a scalper going to the store when the distributor unloads his product and taking everything. He's now actually employed directly by the distributor and he's not even putting the product on the shelf in the first place. This came to light, um, I want to say about six months ago, this information came to me about him being employed by MJ Holdings, who is the largest distributor when it comes to trading cards, from my understanding. And it's quite, you know, alarming that now you're sort of not even in the chance to try and get this product because these people aren't even putting it on the shelves. Now, like I said, this was posted by DGen Rips about nine days ago. I, I did a community post on this, but I want to talk to it a little bit more. And it relates specifically to this video here. So I'm here at Walmart and I'm watching the vendor. This is the guy from my other video earlier and he's recording, or I'm recording, and he just unstocked, full box there. As you can see, he just finished recording, just finished recording, get away from me. You get away from me. Select tags on the shelf, confronting this guy. He's a vendor now, MJ Holdings, or whoever he works for. And he did not put select out. Full box right there. And he's upset. He's the other guy from my other video where he was scalping. Did not put select out. The only. Now you can watch the rest of the video in your own time, but essentially covers the same sort of thing. As I just said, essentially unloading the product, leaving some for himself to do whatever he wants with. And then basically, you know, keep it and shortchange the collector trying to chase this sort of stuff. And the thing that, you know, most of you will say, well, okay, well, Daniel, what's the big deal? Product is really easy to get these days. That's that's fair. But when you're, you know, a customer, when you're a participant in a hobby, in any industry, you expect to be given every opportunity to buy the product that you want, right? It's not fair for people to sort of go into store, especially kids, right? Because they might want to bust select. Um, I think it's basketball here it was referring to. You want to go there and buy it at, a, at an affordable price, rip it in the car park, get that memory that you've got from your dad buying it for you, your mom or grandparents or someone else. But now you can't do that in this specific instance because somebody has decided to try and flip it down the line. It's not the end of the world. It's always going to happen. But we need to be calling it out because it's not it's not good enough. And um, from my understanding, MJ Holdings has been contacted about this individual. Multiple people have contacted them. I'm not sure if he's retained his job. I'm trying to say we should get this guy fired or anything like that. But we need to hold these businesses accountable, right? It's not fair because if this happens, we know with hobby product or you know, TCG related product where you know where case hits might be as an example. This is just somebody trying to deceive that whole process. And when people are talking about fanatics coming on board and maybe not having the best intentions and all that sort of stuff, when we're looking at their, you know, distribution model where they want to go to stores directly and now they're putting restrictions on stores on being able to sell that product. And if they resell that product to somebody else that's going to break it or bust it in their own store, they're going to have repercussions on getting future stock, right? People are blowing up about that and rightfully so because, you know, they could mandate and control that quite poorly. But at a minimum, they're going to be able to track instances like this, right? If, if somebody like this guy for the distributor or for a card store was doing the exact same thing when it comes to the future Fanatics or Tops products, they're not going to get away with this because they're going to be able to track it in some capacity. They're going to be able to hold that store accountable. Right now, MJ Holdings doesn't really care for the most part because what's going to happen? People are going to email and then people are going to forget. Walmart doesn't really care either. How can they hold Walmart accountable? How can Walmart hold them accountable, you know, with reason? 
in reality, you like to think they can, but nothing's really going to happen. With fanatics coming in and, and being so, you know, stringent on the process and being so strict, they're going to make sure that this stuff doesn't happen. And when people do report it, they're going to hopefully take it seriously. Now, I might be um, wishful thinking when it comes to that sort of stuff, but that's where, you know, I see them having a really good improvement opportunity for us as collectors in this space. For the most part, I, I'm, I'm quite upset that they're coming in and, and handling things the way they are. And this is relating to fanatics, as I've shared my thoughts before. But there's these little things that they could do and could improve on within our industry really, really well. Um, I just hope they come out and do it, right? They could come out and shit the bed completely, like I've said before. Um, I'm not pro fanatics in any way, shape or form, but things like this, when I see these kinds of things happening and these kinds of things going wrong, this is where I see the improvement coming within the hobby. The same sort of thing goes to certain card stores, right? Where they're you know, manipulating things and trying to screw over the customer by you know, taking case hits, you know, box toppers as an example, before they sell it to you. They're sort of doing dodgy things and dealings when they're trying to open fresh cases. They're all this backdoor sort of stuff happening with these, you know, older and, and maybe some of these poorly run card stores. And I shouldn't just limit it, limit it to the older stores because it happens with the new ones too. But all these sort of bad behavior around the managing a product, right? These stores are going to get held accountable now. And I think that's a really, really good thing. We just hope that fanatics come out and police it properly, right? Because if they come out and do it, you know, poorly, then I think we're going to be in a pretty bad spot as a hobby because um, they might use this as a stick, like I've said before, to, to sort of remove product from certain stores and things like that. We need kids being able to go into stores, go into Walmart, go into the local card store and buy the product and not have it get bypassed before they get there. Those memories are going to be the reason why people collect in the future. Like I'm sure you guys can think to when you were a kid going to a store and getting a pack. I'm sure there's, you know, one memory you have of opening a pack and getting a cool card as a kid. That stuff, you know, sticks with you for the long term. So when we see things like this, and again, it's not the big deal because you can see all the product on the shelf. At, it's not like product is empty or the shelves are empty, I should say, like it was 12 months ago. But you get what I'm trying to say here. We need to protect that. We need to give everyone an opportunity to get the product they want and not have it get, you know, bypassed before it's even made it to the shelf, which is um, a, a complete joke in my opinion. Now, just quickly... There's an interesting comment here that I just saw as well from this person, Jimbo's Realm. I used to have that job in the beginning of the pandemic. I was getting paid a hundred bucks to hold stuff for people. Hard to say no. I've heard stories like this for years, right? It's always going to happen. You're never going to prevent that completely. But this is where, you know, fanatics coming in. And again, I'll repeat myself, controlling stores, putting pressure on stores to make sure this stuff doesn't happen. You need to be able to, you know, apply rules hard and fast to stores and say, well, You've not done this. If you want to basically keep getting product from us, you need to make sure that these distributors or these scumbags and these scalpers are not doing the things that they're doing right. You need to hold them accountable because that's how we make the hobby, you know, better long term. And we want to protect kids as much as possible as well and give them every opportunity to buy the product. Now, in recent days, you would have seen the Fanatics, you know, new events thing be announced, which is going to be what I think and what many people also think a direct competition to the national, but also things like San Diego Comic Con. I'm going to share my thoughts on that tomorrow because it's not um, just improvements I'm looking for in terms of the value we get as you know attendees to that show. I think there's a lot um, these conventions can do when it comes to protecting vendors, right, from other people basically not paying for a table and then making money at the show. There's things that can be protected around that. I think there's a lot that could be done around content creation and making sure kids are not exposed, making sure people are being filmed and they don't want to be filmed, all this sort of stuff. And I think fanatics events if it does go ahead the way i'm thinking could you know improve upon that as well for everybody so i'll share my thoughts on that tomorrow but for the most part thanks for watching apologies if today's video was a little bit boring or anything like that i'm pretty sick fairly certain i've got bad cold so just bear with me guys hopefully i can see you in a couple of days time if i don't get worse but thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one cheers